right, so now that you have hooked up the wiring from your WeGo 4 to your HP Tuners unit physically, you need to go into the HP Tuners software and tell it how to recognize what that wideband is really saying. So the wideband puts out a voltage from 0 to 5 volts, and then it also equates to a range, an air fuel range. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But the first thing you need to do is have your scanner open and make sure that you have no log files open. If you do, this won't work. So you need to click on scan and then close log file. Once you're here, if you don't have the primary display uh, already showing, go up to displays and click on table primary. That's the only one we're going to need for now. So we're going to go on down to the bottom. HP Tuners has four inputs and two outputs that run down the side of the unit. Now earlier, I had you put the signal wire into the number one slot on the HP Tuners unit, which was the topmost slot. That would equate to this, EIO input number one. So I'm going to right click on input number one and then insert. Okay, now that we have this, we get to pick. Now people always ask, how come I can't just do this? click on a wideband that's already listed here. Well, the thing is, is each one of these widebands has a different AFR output range for the same zero to five volts output. So even if you did happen to have one of these, let's say you had a, an LM1, you could double click it, you could insert it, you could be up and running in one minute flat. But the problem is this doesn't account for the potential for what we call a ground offset error. So if you use a predefined one, you can't adjust it later so that your wideband, when it digitally reads out on your screen uh, on, the, on the actual hardware, matches what HP Tuner says it is. So I don't recommend using these. What we're going to do instead is a user defined. So we're going to hit the plus by user defined, and then we're going to go ahead and configure user defined. Now you'll notice I already made one earlier, but you could ignore that. So I'm going to double click configure user defined. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it in spot number two. Yours will probably be in spot number one. It should probably be undefined. Name, I'm going to call this the WeGo 4 Wideband. Abbreviation, WeGo 4. Now you can call this anything you want, but I recommend it not be generic. I want you to be able to identify it later when we go add it to other areas, such as the charts back here. So WeGo 4 is pretty distinct. Sensor, it probably will come up blank when you open this, but if it doesn't, or if it does, go ahead and go to air fuel ratio. Units are going to be AFR. Now comes time to tell the HP Tuners unit what the voltage equates to. Now this doesn't exist in any formula you're going to get very easily, uh, so what we do is we provide you a spreadsheet to convert it for you. I want you to go ahead over to the spreadsheet here, which is called the wideband offset spreadsheet. You can get that by uh, emailing help at thetuningschool.com or you can find it on our website at thetuningschool.com slash downloads. Offset, wideband offset is an X, uh, Excel file that we've made here just to help you with any device you're trying to hook up to your HP Tuners unit. As long as it's a zero to five volt device, it can be converted to something it can understand, it meaning the HP Tuners unit. So step one is you tell this what is the range of the device? What's the output range? So most of your widebands work from a zero to five volt range. The same thing goes typically for an EGT probe or other things. Next, you'll want to go to your manufacturer's uh, website and find out what the ranges are for your wideband. Now, we're doing the WeGo 4 here. Uh, we have looked that up already, and the range for the WeGo 4 is 10.3 and 19.5. So now we have told my spreadsheet here, this is what zero volts is, 10.3 AFR. Five volts is 19.5. And so we've done what we need to do here, and then we can look down to the green part. Uh, the HP Tuner's formula is going to be 0.543 plus 10.3. And we'll go ahead and plug that in by skipping over to the HP Tuner software. 0.543 is going to go in the bottom. And I'm going to go back over here to point there. Plus 10.3. And you can double check your work by looking at the red line and seeing where it goes. The bottom here is 0 to 5 volts. So at 0 volts, it should say 10.3, which it does. And at 5 volts, uh, it should say 19.5, which it does. So now we know this is going to read as close as possible 
when we hook everything up and test it the first time. Now, if you have an error, let's pretend we did this, we saved it, we fired up the car, and we looked on our Rego 4, and the digital display said 14.0, and in your HP Tuner software, it said 14.5. If that were to happen, you can come back here, and in this box, you can adjust this up or down. So maybe make it a little less than 10 or a little more than 10.3, and then go retest your results and adjust it in little increments until they match perfectly. So let's go ahead and close this out. Do I want to commit my changes? Yes. Now this is usually where people call for tech support again because they've done it, but HP Tuners didn't automatically put it in. So now I'm gonna go right click, insert input. I'm gonna go down to user defined and we call it the WeGo 4. So we're gonna double click it. And now I'm gonna close it. And I see that it shows me here. Now at this point, it's another stop point where people call for help because typically they get this far and then they close this and then they had some old wideband listed here in a chart for some reason and it doesn't read right or it doesn't read the same and they go, why? I did it right in the primary table. Well, that's true. However, you need to plug it in here as well and anywhere else like uh, the gauges if you wanted to. So we'll go right click, chart settings. Let's put it on chart number three because that's an empty one. There's not much there. Now I don't have any place to click here, so I'm gonna click on chart three and then click add series. It added it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and click down here where it says PID, click to insert or change. I'm gonna go find it under my auxiliary inputs and user defined. And you know it's going to work because it says we go for wideband and it's red. It's red because it's in the primary table. You're almost done. Now we have to set a min and a max. So the minimum I expect to read would be 10, and then the maximum I expect to read would be 20. Now if you want to be technical, it would be 10.3 and 19.5. But this is just to set a range over here so I could look at it in the chart properly. Any decimals? Yes. On a wideband, you want to see two decimal places. So we'll close that out. Do I want to cut my changes? Yes. Okay, so now you see we go four is right there. And the next time I go to data log, if I have everything powered up and scanning, my wideband will read correctly right in here. Hope you've enjoyed.